Hey developers, today we are going to look at Suspense. Now Suspense is a new View 3 feature that kind of borrows heavily from React. So we're going to figure out what it is and we're actually going to try it out using View's next Alpha 4 build to see how it works. Let's begin. Before we get too far, let's have a quick word from our sponsor, Eduonics. That's E-D-U-O-N-I-X dot com. So they're always having these sales all the time. So I thought I would go ahead and mention them again. So one really cool course you guys are might be interested in is this Mighty JavaScript Bundle. This is crazy. It has 22 courses. It's 191 hours of content. So basically, you're learning the most popular programming languages with this one-stop solution bundle having 22 exclusive courses with more than 190 hours of video lectures. It covers over 10 exclusive concepts revolving around JavaScript, such as JavaScript fundamentals, modern and advanced concepts of JavaScript, including data structures, ES6, Node.js, Vue.js, Aurelia, Express.js, and so much more. And if you use the coupon code ERIK, E-R-I-K, 20, ERIK20, at checkout, you can get 20% off above and beyond the existing sale. So make sure you look at the link in the description, click on that link, and then apply coupon ERIK coupon code ERIC20 at checkout to get 20% off. Thanks to Eduonix. All right, so I have the view, this view next Webpack preview that Evan, you created. It has the latest version of view three, which right now is an alpha four status. If you look at the package.json, you can see here view three alpha four. And I just wanted to show you kind of a neat concept that's coming to View 3 that, I, that uh, I've heard a little bit about, but I wanted to actually see if I could try it out. And I want to show you guys how to use it. So when you upgrade to View 3, you can use this new feature. And that is called Suspense. So Suspense it actually is borrows heavily from React. So Suspense was a way that you can have components load, um, basically load and have fallbacks if they were asynchronous. So asynchronous components that are waiting for things to happen. If the a, something inside the asynchronous component fails, then you can have a fallback. So you could have like a spinner that spins while the asynchronous component is loading. And then if it fails, you can have like a loading a fail state. Otherwise you can display the, the component itself. So I wanna see if I can do that this here. So this is the basic Webpack preview that Evan you created and all it does is have this click this click button and it shows hello view three. So let's create a new component. I'm gonna create one called let's just make something up. I'm gonna call user dot view and I'm gonna go ahead and just create a, a template here just with some basic information. And this is gonna say hello from uh, user component. And now what we want to do is we want to actually use view three. So we're going to have a setup function. So we're going to use the composition API as if this was a brand new view three app. And we want to somehow simulate like we're talking to a promise. <clears throat> and this promise is either going to fail or it's going to return with some information. So I'm going to create an async. I'm going to create this as an, as an async setup. And now I'm going to create a promise. And it's going to have a resolve and a reject. And let me close this out so you guys can see it a little better. Yeah, we're going to have a resolve and a reject. I have an arrow function here. And now I can just create like a set timeout, which I'm going to have function in here. And I just want to resolve it. And I'm going to resolve it. I'm just going to return back success. And I'm going to put two seconds as the timeout. So this is uh, this is my promise that I'm going to be using. And of course, we need to now wait for this a promise. So I'm going to wait this promise. I have an equal here. Wait promise. And then I'm going to return it. So this is basic composition API 101. And then Right here, I'll put an H5. I'm not gonna use any CSS in this one. And it's gonna display the user, which should just say success. 
So now I've created this component and I should be able to use this component in my main app view. And as you see, we have some asynchronous stuff happening in here. Now, if I go back to my app view, I can import, we're gonna call it oh, user from user.view. And we're gonna have this components object where we're gonna declare the user. And then we're gonna just throw the user in here like this. So if we do all like this, we're actually gonna get an error. So let's see what it shows us right now. So in the console log, it says, cannot use keyword await outside an async of function. So let's see what we did wrong here in my user. Uh, con I, this is an async function, export default, const promise, but doesn't like this await here. So you know what we did is this promise here is not right since we are engulfing everything in here. So we actually want to take these two out. That's my bad. Cool, so it works. Let's see, let's refresh it. But now you're getting this weird message that async setup is not is used without a suspense boundary. So you're probably thinking like, what does that mean? Well, if you're using async values um, inside setup, you actually need to put it in, in the suspense component. So to do that, we need to go back to the app view and I'll just hide this for now. And we can use something called suspense. So it sort of looks like, like this. So we'll have, instead of just putting the user here, we'll put suspense and we'll close suspense with a capital S. And then we'll have templates. So we'll do template here and we don't need this. And we'll have a template here basically these this would be as if we were having a default slots here so we'll have default and now we can put something in here so um maybe we should have this loading dot 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 so this will be our default slot and actually you know what i want to do here i want to put this one here and this will be the fallback so what'll happen is it'll go to the fallback first and then when it actually finishes loading, it'll load in the default. So which this will be our user. So let's see if that works. So now I see loading, cool. So now I see hello from user component and loaded. Maybe I will just to make this a little easier, I'm gonna delete these two, put these at the bottom and we'll run it again. If I can save it this time, saved. Okay, so we're learning again, it says loading, hello from user components, that's pretty neat. So now we have our user component, as long as the promise resolved, it will show success here, and you'll get this neat little loading text, or we could even put a spinner there until it actually loads correctly. That's pretty neat, but what happens if we wanna catch it if it errors out? So that, that's pretty easy too. So the, the way we wanna do that is we'll put div, we'll just create, some sort of tag, doesn't matter what. We'll put bvf here, error, and then we'll display error. And inside our setup function, we can create something called on error captured. On error captured, which we'll have to import in from here, on error captured. And that on error captured we'll have a callback and we'll put error.value equals E and then returns true. And now we have another item we can have here called error. So now we have this error and we can do something here like error loading component. Now obviously right now it's not gonna show it, it still says loading and then it goes to success but we should be able to simulate a failure. So instead of resolving it here, we're just gonna reject it. So now, oops, we need to do two more things. That is, we need to create an error here and we'll have it ref equals null. And then also we want v else here. So let's see if that works. We reload it, loading, it says error loading component error. 
And then if we go back to our user view and change this from a reject to resolve and put a nice success message, and now you can have, we'll reload it. Now it says loading. Now hello from user component success. Cool, so that's really neat way to, we can use pro, uh, suspense and promises. So you can have anytime your any of your components fail to load information, then you can have a loading, you can have fallbacks, you can show errors. Just makes it really simple and easy. Definitely a nice improvement for Vue 3. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks.